someone said they're confused because you're saying you don't recommend supplements, but at the same time, you're saying that you need them or you sell them. Yes, we supplement conservatively. There are certain supplements I think are are smart to take, especially when we advocate a, a plant-based diet or a diet that's that's either vegan or close to vegan or near, you know, or eating either no animal products or very little animal products. And that diminishes your absorption of B12, zinc, iodine too, possibly, DHA and EPA, right? And sometimes vitamin D, which is the sunshine vitamin. So yes, we're making sure that you can get more zinc absorption if you ate more clams and oysters and, you know, can get more, even from seafood, more zinc. But we don't want people to eat that stuff because it's contaminated with BMAA, which can cause Parkinson's disease because we filter and, and nanoplastic particles. So if we're telling people to stay away from the high zinc and high DHA foods, then we have to give them the little supplements to make up to get ideal levels of those for optimal health. So even though we could do it all without supplements, by eating a little bit of more seafood or, or bivalves to get, the, the, to get those nutrients that we want us to get, we're not doing that way. We're, we're cleaner to add an algae-based supplement for DHA and EPA. It's cleaner not to rely on seafood for those nutrients. So I'm not, because of the, the, the um, filtering and dumping of agricultural waste garbage and agricultural runoff into the oceans and lakes causing algae overgrowth, now we have, even on the continental shelf, now we have incredible amount of toxins that have filtered to the bottom that are, are penetrated crabs, lobsters, which are called shellfish, mussels, clams, oysters, and scallops, those four things, which I, we're telling people to avoid eating. The point I'm making is that, yes, we supplement conservatively. Those are the basic six that people should take, right? And then there's some extra things that people could take to help fight cancer, like we talked about, like curcumin and, and EGCG from green tea and mushroom extracts and and built in a certain berry. So there's certain things people could take. So we supplement conservatively and intelligently. And not saying all supplements are bad. We're just saying get most of what you need from food and then just supplement a little specifically and not overdo, not overdo the supplements. And also keep in mind, I always talking about supplements because the main reason I probably have my own line of supplements is to avoid people taking folic acid, vitamin A, beta carotene, you know, these synthetics ingredients that raise risk of cancer that are in supplemental ingredients. So it's very important not to take like a, a fortified soy milk with folic acid in it or a fortified nutritional yeast with folic acid added. This is synthetic supplemental ingredients or take a supplement that has folic acid added to it or vitamin A added to it because those things can increase cancer risk. So even though I'm recommending supplements, I'm also making sure people understand don't just supplement indiscriminately because you can be taking stuff that could hurt you. I think it's cool. Not everyone has this exposure to you, but I get to watch you, you know, when a new trendy ingredient comes up like creatine or something, you do the research. So you are looking it up. You're saying, what did the study say? What should I, you know, so you are forming an opinion on hydrogen, water, on all these things that are coming out. You, you look at them. Right. And some of these things are good or useful, but it still doesn't take the place of eating healthfully. It can. Yeah. yeah. That's where you have to start is eating the right foods, building the right habits, and then supplements for extra zhuzh 